My name's Paul Hamsigan. Uh, as of two weeks ago, uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Adorus Wear. Before that, I was with Alfresco, was one of the co-founders, VP of Engineering for much of my time there, and responsibility, responsible for, for activity, amongst other things. Adorus Wear is a Swiss company. Um, they built a, a case management platform on top of activity. Uh, it's now on top of Flowable. That took five minutes. Four minutes of that was getting a coffee. Uh, I've got a lot of customers in finance um, uh, and insurance. A bunch of us left Alfresco last year, including the core architects of Activity, um, and reluctantly forked Activity uh, and created Flurble, did a release in fall, and then beginning of this year, we did a, another release around the version 6 that we've been working on. Now, version 6 is a real rewrite of the core pieces of the engine. A couple of main areas in the persistence layer in terms of what the back ends are for the data sources, and in terms of how BPM is interpreted by the engine itself. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not going to talk much about the persistence layer, but basically it's abstracted. So you can map process entities such as task jobs onto different data sources. And those could be relational or they could be non-relational. It could be a NoSQL. And you can mix and match them as well. So you can have partial um, relational, partial uh, non-relational. I'm going to be focusing on process execution. Now, with the V5 architectures, so that's like Activity, Communda 7, uh, JPPM3, there's a process virtual machine where you take BPM, convert it to some intermediate form, and map multiple operations onto the, the, the processes. With V6, we're taking an approach where it's a one-to-one -one mapping between BPMN and the execution in the engine. And this avoids a whole bunch of oddities that have grew up within the process engine around edge cases and things like this. What that means is that there's no strange optimizations on the process execution tree. It's a very technical thing. Um, but what it means is the execution tree is now entirely predictable and entirely consistent. So you can do things like poke around and play with it and know exactly what you're doing. Now, why would you want to poke around and play with a running instance of a process? Well, because stuff happens in the world. You know, wh whatever you might do in terms of you know, thinking about a process, people or machines are going to make stuff happen, um, <clears throat> especially with IoT. Um, the approach we're taking, and I'm going to show you here, is is where you don't need any knowledge of BPM, BPM models, or anything like that. A user can just go and insert a, a, a new piece uh, of information into a running process. The nice thing about this is it still creates a, a case model that you can use um, afterwards. Um, but yeah, so the type of use case here is a human or a machine may decide that um, an exception is needed. So you don't have to anticipate everything within, within your process modeling. Uh, and also, you could start using things like machine learning to, to exploit the, the human use of it. I'm going to show this in the context of a case management system. It's got all the right acronyms and everything else. There's a lot of dynamic stuff already there, but V6 brings um, some dynamic processes. And for the demo scenario, we're going to uh, have a, a, a band that we're arranging a tour for. Um, there's going to be a case for the tour, and then we're going to have a process you know, to arrange an element of, of, of each gig that, that's in there. Um, the process that we're using is very simple in, in, in many ways. Um, we're going to collect up some details about the gig. Depending on the size of the audience, we'll either transport the band's own gear to the, the venue, or we'll hire some equipment for the, for, for the night and sound. And you know, you know, there's a few bits around there to make it non-trivial, but it's still quite a simple system, quite a simple example. And we've got to imagine you know, something bad happening. Um, and you know, we can imagine we're on the talk, trying to book, book, book our truck for the, the rental. Um, to, to transport it, and we find out that the French government's introduced new insurance you know, for, for transporting from the UK. Fortunately, we've done this with non-EU companies. We've got bits that we can use, so you know, we're just going to take uh, and insert a new task into the process. And with this mechanism, we could insert the task anywhere within the process, but once we do, it then becomes as if we defined a parallel gateway with the, the existing task and the new task around it. We also imagine a situation where, uh, um, you know, Trump has woken up in the morning and tweeted that you know, his, his energy tax he wanted to bring in, he's, he's going to bring in today. Um, now, we, we planned for this. We've got the process defined for all of this, but we just haven't had time to get that integrated into our other system. So you know, again, we can imagine, I, I just want to insert my predefined process somewhere else into my running um, process instance. And again, I should be able to do that anywhere, anytime um, within the, the process that's, that's currently running. Now, why is this different? Well, um, it's different because uh, um, things like the fact that a user can actually drive this. It's not something where you need to know uh, the, about the guts of the, of the engine. Um, and we can safely and, and predictably insert pieces into um, the, the running process uh, w without worrying about what's happening around it. The, the nice thing about this is it's going to allow us to be able to do a whole bunch of new things in the future. So there's certain things that we couldn't do or found really hard with V5. With V6, we've already been able to do that. So uh, yeah. Um, 
on to the demo. And sorry for flying through that, you know, it's just there's a lot of information to get into. And, and it is very technical. And, and so, yeah, I mean, quite a few of these, these sort of demos have been technical. I mean, th we're talking about the guts of a process engine here. So I'm, I'm going to try and demo stuff, but really what's the magic is happening within that. Um, so, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need you to use your imagination a bit here. I've got a very simple setup uh, um, that I'm going to show. Let's, uh, let's just run it here. So I've got a case set up for the, for the world tour, for the Plow Pistols. Um, and uh, at the moment, I'm just going to you know, run a process to arrange a gig. Um, and what I do, uh, first time through, I'm just going to run through the simple process so you can see the type of tasks that are generated. All the tasks are coming to me. Is, you know, this is all, all demoware stuff um, to give you a flavor. Um, but then I'll start introducing some exceptions and, and sort of ad adjusting the, the running um, processes. So the, the, the simplest, let's start first. We're going to start a process, the arrange a gig process. And we're going to choose that this is like the start form. So we've kicked off. The first thing, there's a task to actually collect some information about the gig. So we'll just go and get some information. This is going to be in Jakarta, and it's going to be in... October, and the expected audience side, I think it's going to be about 8,000 people. Okay, so that's now passed on. So now we've got another task, which, um, because of the branching, is to book a, a light and sound system, because it's a, a big enough venue. So I, I can go to that task. And again, there's certain information I need to fill in, you know, who uh, it's going to be electric or something. So uh, you just this is all just to show you. And then this is going to go just to, to run through the process. You know, I've, I've now booked the equipment for it, so you know, I can confirm the, uh, the venue uh, and everything else, and you know, maybe there's a, a contract or whatever associated with that that I, I want to collect and so on. But so that's a very simple run through. So I, I've just taken that, that simple process and followed the path through it. So now let's do this again. <clears throat> Actually, you know what I'll show you um, is, of course, it's a nice idea to be able to go and inject and, and play around with a, a running process, but you don't necessarily want someone, a user, to be able to go and play with a, a running process anywhere. So, so one of the things you can do is when you're modeling with this, you can actually go, you can define within the model catch up. You can define in the model if you want to enable that sort of more ad hoc behavior. So you can see here if I Scroll down. So I, I've given an allowable action that you can add a dynamic task or, or insert a dynamic subprocess within there. So you, you can control how uncontrollable you want your process to be. So anyway, this time through, I'm going to start uh, another, arrange another gig. And we'll say it's going to be in Europe this time, so I can remember what I'm doing. So the details for the gig in Europe. Let's say we're going to do a gig in Paris. Um, and this is going to be in August. Um, but this is going to be a, a smaller gig. It's only be, going to be a couple of thousand people. Uh, and this time we're going a slightly different route. And we're going to you know, book the band. We're going to book transport to get the band's gear itself. We don't need a, a, anything else for the venue. So you, know, you can imagine I'm, I'm now getting on the phone, talking to you know, the truck rental company to say, OK, I, I need to book a, a truck to take my gear from you know, London to, to, to Paris. And I say, oh, by the way, haven't you heard? There's, there's this new insurance that the French have brought in. Um, and, and I'm afraid you know, you're going to have to get that sorted out for you. Like, That's not in my process. You know? But fortunately, like I say, I've done this before. You know, we, we do this with non-EU companies. So I've, I've got a form that I can fill in for getting my insurance stuff. So what I can do, and you can see I've now got some tasks, uh, some actions available to me because I configured them. I'm just going to insert a dynamic task into the process at this stage. Uh, so I'm going to say get insurance and yeah, whatever. Um, and I'm going to pick uh, the form that I want to use for that. And I'm now just inserted a task into that active process. And it would have inserted it within a parallel gateway. Um, of course, as an end user, you can't see all the parallel gateways. But what you can see is that there is now another task that's put in, in the, the inbox. Um, so, you know, I can carry on now and say that, yeah, I'm going across the channel and there's a 
reference for that. And we can see that, that until I actually complete the get insurance task, the process isn't going to proceed, you know, because it is in a parallel gateway. So if I say, okay, I'm now going to complete this. Uh, And now we proceed on to, you know, the venue's confirmed and we can go through and, and say yes, so it's confirmed and there's no contract and there's a booking reference for this one or whatever. Whoops. So that was a very simple scenario where basically I just inserted a task into a running process, which, you know, is not too exciting. But I could have done that anywhere within any of those, those tasks that were going on there. It gets much more interesting when you start thinking about, well, I'm going to in inject a whole process into a running process instance. Now, it was injecting it into the process instance. So it was just that one instance um, that it was doing it to. And, and yeah, remember that, that sort of scenario I had, we, we, we had a boundary event and things like this. Trying to do this with the V5 architecture gets complicated. If I start trying to inject a more complex process, so let's look at the process I'm planning on injecting. I'm going to, plan, I'm going to inject this process. So I'm going to, you know, collect some information, and depending on the, the part of the thing, I'm going to go and do some of the things, and I've, I've already got, you know, sort of boundaries and events happening within that as well. So this is, again, this is a non-trivial two-step um, task process or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say we're going to start a book another gig. <clears throat> this time it's going to be in the Americas. Collect up details for the gig. Let's do this in New York. New York loves the flow pistols. And yeah, we're expecting 15,000 people for this gig. So we're going to book the, the sound system. Uh, and again, it's at this point, you know, we were just about to book the sound system. And this is when we hear, you know, we, we, we see Donald's tweet you know, the, the energy tax comes in now. So we, we've got to now think about, we, we've got to do something about this energy tax. Um, you know, when we're, when we're booking the equipment, we've got to know, you know, the usage and everything else. Um, so what I can do now is I can just say, I want to inject a complete process, and I can call it whatever I want, it, whatever I want to call it, and choose the process I want to inject. So I'm going to inject the USA energy levy. That's now injected that whole process into this running instance at this point. And you may say, yeah, that was great. You know, I can go and look at the, uh, my inbox again and see that you know, there is, as I might expect, the next task in there. Again, the magic is happening within the engine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step away from the, the surface and go into uh, the admin view, which gives us a bit more chance to in, in see what's happening within the engine. Still, you can't visualize what's happening in the engine too easy. but. Um, what I can do now, if I look at this, there's a number of instances that I've been running through. This is the current active one. And what I can do is I can look at the process diagram of, of that active instance. And if you remember the, the picture we had before, um, when we were going the route, the, the blue is the path we've already been through, green is where we're currently at, if you can see it. Um, we were going through the top route where we were booking the sound light system. Now, now that's not a task anymore, that's now become an embedded sub-process that I can step into. And there you can see the original task. And in parallel, there is now this sub-process, which is the whole US levy process. So just for this one instance, this process is now running as if I defined this as my original process. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. So yeah, does it work? Well, uh, let's uh, carry on going through. So. Uh, um, I need to say how much energy my equipment is. So let's just say it's five kilowatts. We're going to be using it for four hours. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, we're not burning enough energy. You know, we've got to burn more energy to, to help the U.S. economy because I, I, I gather that's that's the the way things are now. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, we got we got to pay uh, we got to pay some extra. Um, and it tells me how much to pay, and we we say yeah, we've paid that. So we've gone through that step. Obviously, because we are low energy, then we, we must be communists. So um, we're also going to get hit with the wall tax as well. So we've got to pay the wall tax. Um, OK, yeah, I've paid it. Uh, and on we go. And again, you know, I can only move forward uh, 
when I, I put in all the, uh, the details here. And now we've completed the process. Uh, so yeah, so what I showed there was starting a process, having a process instance, injecting a completely new process, and just running that through as if I defined that process up front. <clears throat> How am I doing for time? Am I good on time? Uh, yeah. Plenty of time? Uh, am I brave enough to run a process, inject a process, inject another process into that injected process? Because I should be able to, shouldn't I? I tried this last night, and it worked last night, so. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I'm going to start Arrange a Gig. I'll do it in the Americas again. Uh, this time, we'll say that we're going to be doing it in Chicago. Uh, it doesn't really matter when. We're doing a lot of things in August. And let's say it's going to be, uh, oops, you know, 9,000 people we're expecting. So again, we're going to go through the booking the light and sound system there. Um, <clears throat> and again, I can go through and say, this time, I'm going to in inject the, uh, check the tax levy. So we'll look here, we can see now we do have, you know, the equipment energy uh, consumption check plus the existing task that was there before. Um, so what I should then be able to do now is I, I could step through this. Um, so we're gonna use it for four hours. And again, I've now stepped, if you remember that process, I've stepped actually into a boundary. There's a, there's a, in a boundary event around um, this particular low energy levy task. So what I could do now is I could say, well, let's, let's say, okay, well, there's, I've got to deal with a new sort of type of tax. Uh, maybe I need to let accounts payable know about this because my, our systems aren't actually geared up for doing that. So, you know, let's, uh, Fortunately, I do have a system, uh, a process that, uh, yeah, set up a new accounts payable item. Let's just inject that. So we're still able to move forward on that, but we should now see that there is a third task. So I've started a process instance, embedded just in that one instance, another process, started continuing on that, and within that embedded, injected instance, embedded another um, uh, process. So, and again, it is as if I define this process up front. So, uh, you know, as you would expect if I go back here and inspect what's happening underneath. Let's get a fresh. Look at this. So again, I went through this top route. I embedded the uh, levy process, so that's in there, that's there. I went through this, I'm now in this you know, another boundary, I'm in this particular thing, I then went in and I embedded the adding the thing to the AP system. So I can do all of this. Now, that's all very exciting, all very nice in the case management type of environment, and it's all wonderful. Now, think about this in the context of maybe a chatbot, because a chatbot really is likely to have a process behind it. When you get to a certain point of engaging with a chatbot, there is something that the chatbot is gonna guide you through. Now, in that type of conversational context, you started down one path. Now, you, you know, with, with a human being, it's like, oh, hang on, there's this bit. Now, with this type of technology, you could imagine a chatbot saying, oh, at this point in the conversation, I need to insert this process snippet to help me deal with this new piece of, of, of context that the user has brought in. So, so introducing dynamic process snippets in, in a very uh, instance-oriented way gives us a way of, of, of dealing with some of the, the, the newer uh, ways of interacting um, with, with, with people. Um, so, uh, yeah, and again, you know, all of these things, it, it looks wonderful and it's simple here, and, but you, you don't know what horrible things I've had to do behind the scenes to make this happen. So uh, j just, just for the, uh, the techies amongst you, um, this, is, uh, this is the API that uh, has to be called. Um, so if I want to inject a task, any task in, in, into the, uh, an active process, um, it's, it's basically two lines of code. Um, if, if I want to inject a whole process into a running instance, uh, it's just two lines of code. Um, 
So, so the idea is, you know, this is, this is all become enabled because of the re refactoring, re uh, 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 imagining of the execution engine and allowing us to be able to manipulate it very dynamically and very consistently. Whoops, it's dipping through. So I'll stop at that point.